interesting to play, so. Oh, right, because that is the. I don't know where the talent comes from, but who actually is for them set dressing to play, so. Oh, right, because that is the. I don't know where the talent comes from, but who. But it seems to me that um, music has a lot of influence on a lot of young people today. You know, politics are getting, well, I don't know, you know how they get it. You know, a cat that talk on uh, TV, a cat in Mississippi, a farmer in Mississippi, a cat barely understand him except when he says America, you know, so then he's going to vote for him. But it's through music, it's all true, either true or false, you know. We're standing in 23 Brook Street, um, the upper rooms of the building, um, and it's the flat where Jimi Hendrix uh, lived with his girlfriend, Kathy Etchingham. Uh, they rented this flat in July 1968 and lived together here until the end of March 1969. When he found out that Handel had lived here, um, he was uh, interested, he had a very open ear, he was, he was always willing to listen to all kinds of music. So he went up to Oxford Street to HMV, uh, a record shop, and bought um, the Water Music uh, and the Messiah. And like it's a spread, you know, it's harmony and communication. There was no violence at all out there, which is completely different. You know, nobody can expect this through a mixed group or whatever you want to call it. One of the great advantages of living here was that there were no neighbours. It wasn't really a residential street at that time. So you could play music um, as loud as you liked, um, and, and, and they did. Uh, I think it was a kind of place where, um, after they'd been to the speakeasy, so one of the music uh, clubs, just uh, five or ten minutes walk away. They'd all co they'd come back here later and, and hang out and so on. So yeah, um, Jimmy was 25 when he was here. So yeah, they, they had some fun. Yeah. Oh, that was a picture that was in the Melody Maker. I flashed and clicked, and then you noticed that. Then I put the camera down again. Then I think we just started talking about, um, you know, what his plans were and what music we were listening to, what we'd been up. Because he was asking us about stuff. Because he didn't, you know, he couldn't really. We saw everybody, <laughs> and I said, well, last week I saw Eric Clapton. Oh, how's Eric? You know, I said, he's my favorite guitar player, <laughs> you know.
that guitar was always leaned up against the bed there. It was always within hand's reach. He composed many of his most famous songs on that guitar, not on an electric guitar actually. And she said, um, you know, he'd play and play and play. You know, people think of Hendrix as a genius. He was also someone who worked really, really hard on his music. I think he'd be very proud. And who'd have thought, you know, 47 years later or whatever, he'd still be known and people, you still have the music. Every time, every time I hear that, um, Hey Joe on the radio, I'm back in the dark room again. The music and the pictures are on mnemonic to bring you back into that. And I think it's very important for the younger generation who don't know that world of freedom and hippiness and money wasn't an issue and hey you walk down the street and there's Jimmy Page or Richie Blackmore or you go to the speakeasy and uh, there's Keith Moon destroying somebody's drum <laughs> and drinking somebody uh, to the floor in the bar 